Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial video that I'm going to do. Now I haven't done one of these for a while but I thought I would uh, show you an opening that you might be interested in playing and learning and it's an opening I've just released a DVD on but I'm going to take you through what I consider the five most important steps to learn in this opening. I'm going to keep it really simple so I'm going to try to make this easy for even beginners out there to pick up and I'm going to show you the main ideas in as quickly as I can format so you guys might feel quite confident to play this opening um, at least give it a try. Now the opening I'm talking about is the black line and I've done a DVD like I mentioned not for my own company but for chess based on this DVD but a lot of people on YouTube have been requesting tutorial opening videos so I'm trying to listen to you guys and try some other stuff out so I'm gonna explain this with two games that I've played now I always think if someone's gonna try and sell you a DVD no matter who it is that they should play the opening so check out before you buy a book or a DVD that that players actually played the opening because of course they're going to understand it more and uh, you know it's like putting your money where your mouth is and the first game I'm going to show you is a game I had um, in about the year 2008 I think something like this and this is an opening you play with black so you can play this opening against both e4 and d4 so it's very simple setup and like I say I'm going to try to use five stages and I want you to try and remember the five stages in order to play this opening and in this first video if this is popular I might do some more videos on the opening or you should just buy the bloody DVD up to you um, I'm going to show you what you should do against white's most common setup now stage one of this opening is to first play d6 and this move is played I'm going to try to explain each move to you in order to take some control over the center and to vacate this square here for a black knight and also to support the move e5 when you take a claim in the center so this is always your starting move so you play this you can play this against anything now white's best move here must be d4 putting two pawns in the middle of the board and now we need to develop our pieces so the next stage well it's still stage one i'd say is to bring the knights out stage one is basically bring the knights out this is stage one and here the best way to bring a knight out is by playing the knight to this square because you develop and you create a threat against the pawn white should develop and defend that pawn i mean other moves are inferior if he pushes the pawn on you can simply capture take the queens off and go knight g4 it's a typical idea winning a pawn so knight c3 is best and now we play with our other knight we bring out our other knight so knight b d7 and this is stage one like i say there's five stages of this i want you to master the five stages you'll know another opening stage one bring the knights out now this opening has also been played by other players with the move e5 here which is going to come into effect in stage two i don't play this move here because I don't like boring, boring, fall asleep, <laughs> Berlin type of positions. I want to keep things spicy. And this opening, I think, is one of the most aggressive openings you have as black that you can play. So I'm trying to give you something spicy, aggressive, a lot of fun. As you're going to see later, I'm going to save the best until later on. I, I, you'll be, if you're going to watch till the end, you'll love it. I don't play this move because it allows white to take the pawn and to take the queens off the board and that's totally not my style so instead of doing this i play knight bd7 and this is getting ready for stage two but it avoids exchange of queens so let's just go over stage one very quickly and like i say all you have to do is remember five steps and you'll be ready to play this opening very simple so stage one is bring the knights out that is rule one stage one Rule one, simply bring your knights out to the center in preparation for stage two. And as we're going to see here, the knights are in the center and your knight is blocking a potential exchange of queens. 
Now, white has a lot of moves here, but his most common move, and this is what we're going to look at today, and probably the best move, is knight to f3. It's simply bringing out the second knight, simply developing. Now we go to stage two. We need to do something in the center, otherwise we'll get suffocated. And maybe now white is threatening to play e5 himself. He wasn't before because we were controlling that square with two pieces, but maybe now he is. So we should now play e5 in this position, taking a claim in the center of the board. And you can see that we're defending this pawn in a nice way. Now, white's best move here is to again develop. You need to develop in the opening and get ready for castling. So he needs to move the bishop here. Where is the best square for this bishop? c4. The best square is c4 because it's on the most active diagonal. And of course, when you're developing, you need to put your pieces on the best squares. And the end of stage two, very simple stage, is to develop our bishop with bishop to e7 because by doing this, if we, we keep the position very flexible and if white ever tries a knight g5, we can go castles and defend f7 this way. Um, and that's what we do against knight g5. But this is a good, flexible move, developing a piece and simply taking a stake in the centre. So stage two is... There we have the lovely Danny Gormali explaining stage two in his beautiful style. e5 to control the center and develop with bishop e7. So remember rule two there. Rule two, e5 and bishop e7. Now, what should white do here? Well, white obviously castles. We come to stage three now. And stage three is to secure our central square and control some squares. And we do this by playing the move c6. Now this move is very useful for a couple of reasons. Number one, it takes control of some central squares, d5, so that a white piece can't fly into that square later on. And also it maybe threatens b5, which would clearly help us because we expand on an area of the board. Um, so that's the one thing this move c6 does. But the other idea is to allow our queen to tuck in behind that pawn. So our queen can move to c7, and the queen on c7 does an excellent job of giving extra protection on that mini diagonal to our pawn. So this is a very key idea. Now, the best move for white here is a4. This is stopping us from advancing with b5. If white doesn't play this move, we should advance. But now we continue with stage three, queen c7 consolidating our center. So very simple stage. So let's just have a look at that again. Rule three. And rule three is consolidate the center with these two moves. C6 to control the squares and queen C7. Queen C7 defends the center in a more solid way. Later on, it's good to connect our rooks. And also, as we're going to see later on, our knight on D7 can now move. So here there's a number of options that white can play. Now in this game, my opponent played h3. Now why, why did he play this move? Because we should always think about our opponent's options. Well, he wants to go bishop e3, developing his last piece, but he doesn't want to get hit by knight g4. Knight g4 would be very annoying attacking that bishop. So he wants to avoid this. But in my eyes, h3 is really what we want to see. This is the move we want to see. If our opponent plays h3, we should have a big... I don't know what that was. It's going to be a big smile on our faces. Why? Because now we go over to stage 4. And stage 4 is where we get funky with it. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 and this is where the black line comes to life. This is where it starts to roar. Rawr. So stage four is the black line roar. What is that stage? Well, you may think we should castle here. No, we do not castle in the black line. This is one of the only openings where we do not castle. We're going for a super aggressive setup. And here we play h6 with the intention of roaring with g5. Crazy idea. And the idea of g5 is to go g4 next and attack on the king side. So it's a very interesting, aggressive idea. So after bishop e3 now, well, the move I'm going to suggest to you guys is now 
g5 get roaring on the king side and this is why this opening is so much fun you don't castle you just attack and here you want to go g4 next when white will either have to capture on g4 or allow you to capture on h3 so you can see why i think this is much better for black when white has played h3 it means we can open up more lines where we want to attack but basically that's stage four so let's just remind you of stage four stage four is time to get funky attack with gary the g pawn h6 and g5 that's rule four we only have one more rule to look at so let's go back to this position and well um in the game i played we had a position with knight d2 played i played g5 here so it was a slight different move order but let's just see through our move or what would happen well bishop e3 and now g5 and if knight d2 we come on to our fifth and final stage then you're in your own hands and that is before we start opening up the position over here we reroute one important piece and this frees up all the potential of our position which piece is that it's the knight on d7 this knight wants to come around towards white's king side to help the attack and stage five is knight to f8 followed by knight g6 followed by knight to f4 so have a look at that route imagine that knight landing plonk on that square when it lands on that square if white captures the knight we take with our g pawn opening up the g file so we can attack on that and when our knight lands on that square if white doesn't take the knight we can attack these two pawns here what else does this knight maneuver do well as soon as we move the knight so as soon as we play knight to f8 our bishop on c8 can now have potential to join in the attack so the last stage is the stage five rule five and that is here comes the knight knight to f8 knight to g6 and make that eagle land with knight to f4 and that is basically um i would say the five stages that you need to learn in order to play this opening now you can stop the video now if you don't want to have a look i want to show now just back up this with some games i've played just to show these action these these ideas how they can work out in a practical sense um i mean one thing I should note, if you want a more detailed analysis of this opening, my DVD is, sale, is for sale from Chessbase. Got to do a bit of a sales pitch. There you go. It's called The Black Line. It's about six hours, five and a half hours of me explaining this opening. And you can buy it there from a the Chessbase shop. I'm sure some of you have already. But I'm going to do some videos on it anyway. This is a free way just to give you a little taster of the opening. So stop the video now if you just want to go over those five points. But let me show you very quickly, if you want to keep going, two games I've had in this strategy. And now, well, I had one game after this happened and the game we're going to look at here where White now tried to attack on the queen side with b4. But look how my attack comes to life knight g6 still going for stage five of this opening my opponent attacked with b5 on the queen side and now well i could go knight g4 i could finish off stage five but also whenever you play openings you've got to remain flexible and here it seemed that the move g4 was even stronger this is another important attacking idea because you're just trying to open up the king side and rook g8 will come later checkmate hopefully to follow now my opponent took on g4 had he not played this i would have taken on h3 and gone for the attack and now i played knight takes g4 so you can see that my knight has taken up a very aggressive square my opponent took on c6 i recaptured with the pawn i've got to keep controlling these two squares and very interesting he's attacking on the queen side i'm attacking on the king side my opponent now played queen f3 and here i played a bad move in the game i should have played a move which i'm going to leave it to you guys pause the video now there's a move here which should actually win on the spot for black and it's to do with this queen the potential this queen has 
coming down to h2 massive clue for you there but work that out yourself now in the game i actually play bishop g5 and just look how my pieces still came to life d5 try to keep the area of the board your weakest as closed as possible so i played c5 trying to close lines down my opponent checked my king the king is perfectly happy on f8 and now my opponent made a little bit of progress on the queen side but you can see that all my pieces are hovering on the king side here knight to c4 was played he's attacking over there but i'm attacking on the king side i much prefer attacking on the king side because if it works you checkmate can't be bad now i move my bishop here so that my queen could come into the attack my bishop was obstructing my queen and now my opponent played g3 in order to try to stop this idea but after my next move he was kaplot and my next move was a self fork knight to h4 very nice move here and pretty much my opponent is is lost in this position i'm not going to look at any more the point is if he takes on h4 then my queen comes into the attack i'm threatening checkmate i'm threatening rook g8 all my pieces are pretty much attacking it's a really harmonious position and the whole opening has worked to perfection so it's been a very good opening now just to test that you will learn those ideas let's move on to a second game and while i go through the moves here i was black here in this game i want you to try to remember the rules i taught you and try to predict the moves with me so try to guess the moves i'm going to play as i play them so let's 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 do this okay my opponent was um, one of ireland's top players international master sam collins very strong player um should be a grandmaster but he's a lawyer now uh, i won this game interesting game and the game continued e4 stage one what's stage one stage one remember stage one get the knights out how do you do that well first you play d6 and after this you go knight f6 first and now knight d7 so stage one get the knights out and you need your knight on d7 to block the d file my opponent continued as my opponent did in the last game knight f3 what's stage two stage two now what do i do now take a stake in the center so e5 and bishop e7 this is stage two and after my opponent castles what's stage three consolidate the center consolidate the center so here i go c6 with the idea of moving my queen to c7 which frees up my knight and it controls some squares now my opponent played a4 had he not played that move i would have gone b5 and now we finish stage three queen c7 very simple you see very simple stuff and you should you've learned an opening already pretty much in a very basic way here now my opponent played a different strategy here a better strategy than my last opponent he played queen e2 now he's not committing to h3 but we can still do the same thing what is stage four this is where we get funky with it da -da 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 -da. i think that's will smith isn't it but anyway not quite as funky as james dean what is stage four get gary the g pawn flying baby h6 and here the idea is g5 next my opponent played rook d1 now here i got i got the plan a little bit mixed up i i i you know you can i, I was trying new ideas out if i was you here i would just recommend ongoing g5 in this position go g5 and next you can do your plan of knight f8 knight here and attack so this is the way i'd play it now what i did against sam i played stage five a little bit prematurely what which was the knight maneuver and i went knight to f8 here which allowed an interesting idea and that was knight to h4 and of course had i gone g5 and moved before this would have stopped knight to h4 but sam plays very cleverly because if g5 his knight can now come into f5 i don't want to allow that it's a big square for the knight and this puts me off playing knight here but still very interesting let's see how the game continued i played um g6 here let me just find the move very quickly and this is to stop his knight from coming in and i'm going to slowly kick this knight away i want to move my knight on f6 kick that knight away and get going with my plan and it's still even if you get your moves mixed up you need to know the ideas and that's what i'm trying to show you here 
Now my opponent played g3. I now swapped ideas because logically thinking, if your opponent does something you're not expecting, like knight h4, think what on the minor sides does that do to his position? Well, he's taken a knight away from the center. So he has lost control of d4 and e5. So I'm now thinking, let's swap plans and aim for the center because he's less protected there. So I played knight to e6, a good move, trying to take advantage of his knight being offside. So now he moves his knight back to f3 and I continue my plan, g5. So I can play this move now because his knight cannot come in to f5. My opponent played d5 and here taking would be a mistake because you need to keep your pawn on c6 to cover the squares. I just went back to my plan of stage five, trying to bring this knight around to attack. And after lots of fun and games, we can see that my opponent had to sacrifice a pawn because the pin was too strong. But all in all, this is exactly the kind of position you want when you play this opening. Ideas here for me include sacrificing my knight on f4. You're going to have so much fun playing this. In another video, I might show you a game or two, not on the opening stages, some middle game ideas. But knight to f4 is a sacrificial idea. Rook g8, opening up the g file at all costs. But all in all, your idea is what we've mentioned here. So let's just, uh, another thing I would like to say again, if we go back to sort of around the part where we're going to stage four. So let's say after h6, and this is when we're about to go g5. g5 is a lot stronger when white has played h3 because it's easier for us to open up white. You can still play it if you want to, but it's a lot stronger against h3. But really, they're the stage five stages. That's all I want to say for this video. I'll try to keep it as short as I possibly can and teach you the basic lessons in the basic black line. Don't need to overcomplicate it any more than that. And really, the five stages there, run through it again. Let's just go through them very quickly. Rule one, bring the knights out. Rule two, e5 and bishop e7, control the center. Rule three, consolidate the center with c6 and queen c7. Now, rule four is the fun part. Time to get funky. Get Gary going with h6 and g5. And the final rule, don't forget about this knight maneuver, bringing the knight on d6 around. This is a very important idea. Okay, that's all I want to say. So thank you very much for that little opening lesson. And I'm only doing this because someone recommended it. Um, of course, these are not as in-depth as my DVDs. And my YouTube channels, I'll be honest, a bit more fun um, than, you know, teaching. My DVDs that I've done, especially for Ginger GM, go into a lot of detail, a lot of research. They're really from every level, from beginner to grandmaster, and they should help everyone. And they're very long DVDs. So, you know, they're, they're, buy them for digital download if you want your more in-depth look. But this should give you a little taste of what can be a fascinating opening. So, bye for now. Give me your feedback on that video, even if you thought it was a pile of crap. Thank you very much. Goodbye.